I thought I would go through the um, oral history project a little bit with you and we'll get an idea on whether you think that will help. But basically this is the first written assignment that you'll have due. I tried to time this so it would be um, due on September 24th when we get back. And again, if we have any changes in that, we'll have to deal with it. But the idea of this one is that you try to find a person in their 60s, 70s, or 80s, someone who really likes to talk and ask him or her questions about their mass media experiences in the 20th century, so 1930s on, and use the questions. I have all the questions listed for you. If you don't have some sort of family member or somebody acquaintance in this back age bracket, um, I've had students actually go to retirement communities or nursing home or whatever and try to find somebody to talk to. And again, that's only if you don't have an old person to talk to. So um, a lot of times this really turns out to be one of the, the uh, more enjoyable assignments in, in the 143. I've had a lot of students that really ended up with their grandparents or their grandma or whatever, or some of them did their, you know, prefer not parents, but you can if they're, you know, old enough, 60s, 70s or 80s. But it really does sort of get an idea of, of how media has changed. So what you're going to have to do on this one is just a 12 point font Times Roman cover page with your name, who the person is you're interviewing. Um, you can have an introduction about the person if you want to on it. And pretty much you can write about a paragraph or a single space paragraph for each category. And you can summarize their responses again. If there's some sort of quote, you can put it in there. You don't have to write down everything they say verbatim, but you can put quotation marks if, if you do have a direct quote from. But try to include the stuff that's really cool, that they, that they you know, talk about things that are interesting. If they talked about radio, they talked about TV, whatever. So the whole thing really should only be about three to four pages, single spaced, um, which doesn't include the cover page. And we can submit it through um, Canvas as a Word document or the day after we show up, because hopefully that'll be like the Thursday when we come back, if we do come back, hopefully. That, and on that day, I'll have everybody sort of go through the, around the room and you get points for doing a brief presentation on this. So you just basically talk about the person that you interviewed. You don't have to read it verbatim again either. And you know who the person is, who their relationship is to you, and what really made sense in terms of this oral history. So, and again, you don't have to read the paper. You can use note cards if you want to, but again, I'm, I'm not worried about it. It's just basically to give a little bit of a background in terms of what it is. So generally I divide this up into either 100 for the content and 100 for the presentation or 150 content, 50 points presentation, it's sort of a dual thing to get 200 points. So don't, don't worry about that aspect of it. It's usually you know pretty easy thing to do and we, have, we try to have fun with this assignment. So here's a list of some interview questions. You can actually copy this um, Word document and write into it and then try to put your paper together. So that makes it pretty easy. So literally, you know, the questions that you want to pick out of here to ask them, you don't have to ask every single one. So there's a section on sound recording, on radio, television, and then movies. And basically, you know, go through the list and try to see you know, what you can come up with with the person you're interviewing. So take this as sort of a fun thing. It's not, um, Again, content, I'm not going to grade you on grammar and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, try to do it as nicely as you can, you know, make it a clean, good looking paper. And this is what you can work on, hopefully, until we uh, come back is what I'm hoping to do. But again, you still have to read the chapters and go through that too. So I tried to gear the whole thing to reading the chapters and we get through those first five and then we come back, we can really do more in-depth stuff in class and get more discussions going and that type of thing. If by any chance it changes, I'll try to morph to some sort of thing that we could all get in a Zoom meeting together. I'm still working on trying to decide whether to do that or not. Since we're not meeting at the time of the class, we're not doing the, you know, the same time period to actually meet and have everybody in a Zoom meeting, which I didn't want to go into that because I thought we were going to go back with the face-to-face. The -face. So keep crossing your fingers that it happens because that'll make it a lot easier to, to get where we want to be in terms of getting through the class. So I don't think this is too terrible in terms of the assignments that you've had so far is basically just reading those chapters, know the chapters, and get started on this, and then you should be pretty much good to go to start with until we actually get back in class. Okay, have a good one.